Hello everyone and welcome back to Anything Joe's, a collaborative journey through the world of G.I. Joe. My name is Greg Engel. And I'm Jaron Decker. And we'll be your host today. Today on Anything Joe's, we're going to catch up on our news. We're going to talk about our recent acquisitions. We're going to read a little bit of viewer mail. And we're going to have to get right into it because we've got a lot to cover. So well, let's get into the news. Mezco Toys announces one twelve collective G.I. Joe Snake Eyes Deluxe Edition. So in what has become a pretty long-running series of figures, despite the fact that we haven't actually seen one of them in hand yet, Mezco has announced that yet another 112 collective G.I. Joe figure, which I guess implies that the pre-orders are doing pretty well. Either that or they were so far along in the pipeline, they, it's, it's too late to stop now. <laughs> yeah, they've got a prototype shown on their website. Retail pricing on this is $112. Ships January to March 2023. So pretty far out. I mean, still a year away. What do you? What's your take on this, Darren? What do you think about this figure? I mean, it's very far away considering that the Destro was supposed to be out what four months ago. Yeah, this is the exact reason why I pre-ordered them on Big Bad Toy Store because it's a smaller deposit, the shipping's cheaper, uh, and honestly, I've waited so long now that if it takes them longer to fulfill it, I don't really care. Yeah, I. I mean. I really need to see. I've not ever owned a Mezco. Neither have I. I want to see what it's like. I wish my Destro would have already been around so that I could know if I like the line, if I want to keep going. Um, I did already pre-order it, so they've got me for $11.20. <laughs> you pre-ordered that Destro or this Snake Eyes? Uh, both. Oh, okay, okay. As I look at the Snake Eyes, I regret pre-ordering it, but the timber is what what sold me on it. It, something about, and it might, maybe they fix it in the regular release. He looks like his torso is about half the size of what it should be. Like his pants look like they're pulled up like my sons did today at Easter with his <laughs> suspenders. Like it looks like his pants are just riding up over his belly button. And he looks oddly proportioned. I, in general, I'm not a big fan of like the real cloth on figures like these. I think the upper torso part is fine. The like skin tight stuff, but the like pants just don't do it for me. I like the look of this figure. I like the accessory set. I mean, there's a few things that would change. Like, uh, they have they put his Arashikage tattoo on his shoulder a lot now. I'm not really a big fan of that. On, on what is an otherwise almost completely black outfit, I think it stands out a little too much. But I like the visor look, and I like the uh, his kind of like classic Uzi. Sword could use a little work also, but again, this is a prototype. I'm sure they'll probably fix it. Other pictures, he's got like these nunchucks. I mean, it looks super poseable. There's a butterfly knife. I mean, it comes with a ton of stuff. I like that he's got the uh, the big twin blades from, uh, what is that, V3 or V4 Snake Eyes? Yeah, one of the last pictures that even looks like the cover to like G.I. Joe number 55, where it's just like a big close-up of Snake Eyes on the cover, and they have a bunch of Marvel characters around the border. I mean, it looks almost exactly like that. I haven't pre-ordered this yet. I feel like I probably am going to. I just have been kind of delayed because... I am optimistic that that Destro will, will show up and, and kind of steer me in one direction or the other. I'm pretty signed on to this line. As much as I've signed, we'll talk about this in a minute, but as much as I'm pretty much off of the 3-0 bandwagon, I'm pretty much every figure that they've revealed, I'm thinking, yes, I will want this. And I guess if I'm disappointed in person, then I'll you know, sell off the three or four of them that I've already <laughs> put money down on. I'm definitely not going to cancel. I mean, like if I if I pre-order it and I pay my little ten dollars or whatever, that's it. I'm in. I'm not just going to hand the money yeah. away. Any other thoughts on this figure? I mean, he looks good, but with, because it's a prototype, there's only so much we can see about it. Yeah, I'm really hoping they adjust his uh, his proportions because to me, and, and in some of the pictures, it does look a little better. So maybe in person, it'll look really good. I like that they give him gear. I would love to see what Timber looks like, but I know we're we're probably what fourteen to eighteen months away from seeing this. Yeah, I'm looking through the accessory pack, and he's got like one where it looks like he's throwing throwing stars, mm -hmm. and or there's one where he's throwing a grenade, and it actually has the like motion effect kind of to make it look sort of, sort of comic booky. Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of a lot of little accessories in this. Nothing huge, I guess. Other than, I guess, Timber. Timber's pretty big. It's a pretty big accessory. But uh, I just don't know. I'm kind of in the same boat you are. The cloth is not my preferred. You know, like I've seen some people do customs on even the classified line and add cloth to it. And I just, I've never loved that. 
But it, I think it's just because I have a daughter and it makes me feel like I'm playing with a Barbie, maybe. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I like my figures to be the way they are, and I don't want to have to worry about their cloth getting all messed up. Like, it's a lot, you know, if something gets scuffed up on the paint or something, there are feasibly ways to fix that. I am not someone who's going to be able to restitch a set of size 0.5 pants. Yeah, I feel pretty much exactly the same. Just not, just not my cup of tea. But, I mean, again, if the figure looks good enough, it doesn't. It's not going to steer me off that much. I do still really want these. And I think figures where, like, Destro's a better example of a figure that doesn't use as much cloth. I think it works to his benefit in a big way. I think that Destro still looks like one of the best in the, in the line that they've shown so far. Yeah, I think, in my opinion, the Destro's the best, the Roadblock is the worst, and this one's right in the middle. And that's no offense to the ro- the Roadblock. I just don't love it, and it might be because it's the 14th version of Roadblock we've had in different forms, and it's not, to me, drastically any different. It's making a comeback in a big way. It's going to be at every line f- going forward Apparently. for multiples, multiples upon multiples. I mean, we've got multiples just to talk about today, I believe, right? Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. All right, we'll revisit this when we have a non-prototype to show. It's something to think about, something that's probably, I mean, is coming up. Uh, I'll have stronger feelings when I have a Mezco figure in my hand to really speak on. G.I. Joe Classified Book 1 gets a uh, synopsis. So we haven't we covered this once before when it was announced that they're making a young adult literature that is tied into the G.I. Joe Classified series. But because it's a young adult book, it's more Babysitter's Club than uh, G.I. Joe A Real American Hero. Uh, but we didn't know any further details on it, and now we have a little bit of a better picture. So I'm going to read that synopsis to you right now, and we'll, we're going to discuss it a little bit. When Stan's mom gets the... I wish I could, had a movie trailer voice. When Stan's mom gets the job offer of a lifetime <laughs> at a cutting-edge tech company, Stan packs his bags and exchanges Chicago for Springfield, home to the secretive tech behemoth, Decobre Industries. Saying goodbye to big city life is only the first challenge Stan faces in moving to Springfield, a town that's eerily under the thumb of his mother's powerful employer. DeCobre has its hands in everything, including the liar XR augmented reality headsets that Stan and his fellow students at Springfield Academy are asked to beta test. At first, Stan loves his headset. Data on his classmates is at his fingertips, and the liar's custom filters make school sort of fun. But then he meets Scarlet, Ichi no Zoro me and Julian and his new friends show him there's a lot more going on behind DeCobre's flashy tech. When several kids go missing at school, Stan and his friends set out to uncover the truth behind the devices. But the further they dig, the more sinister the conspiracy at the heart of their town appears. Okay, so that actually tells us quite a lot. The model set forward in this is very reminiscent of the uh, G.I. Joe Renegades cartoon, which bills Cobra as sort of a trustworthy Walmart or Amazon-esque establishment, and they deal with the general public every day, and everybody trusts them and loves them. And then there's a small team of Joes that realizes there's something sinister going on, and they're kind of like the outlaws as they're trying to prove their guilt. Uh, and so this is kind of the same thing. They go into a town. It's it's sort of under the uh, under the thumb of Cobra. They're controlling everybody, or maybe they're all Cobra employees. And then this new kid meets several other kids, which only only Scarlet is the recognizable name of that batch, uh, unless they are giving unless they they're either making new characters that I assume will be Joe's, just very young, or these are supposed to be like different identities for existing joes and until we see their like code name i guess we won't know so yeah the date on this now and it has moved a lot is currently july 26th at the time of this recording and assuming nothing changes between then and now we'll definitely be covering this i did pre-order this that's how i know the date has moved around a lot because they email me almost (laughs) every week on it um and i guess i'll sit down and read this dumb book intended with the grade level of three to seven which is a a reading age of eight to 12 years is about my that's about where i'm at listed at 256 pages so we will cover this even if i'm the only person that reads it so you don't have to i'll read it and we'll talk about it see if it's any count do you have any thoughts on now that you know the synopsis you have any opinion on how they're kind of setting the story up do you think this book has a chance with a young adult market uh, you know, I mean, it just depends on how into that kids with bike genre they're willing to go. Like the the Stranger Things, the 
that kind of thing, which is what it seems like they're trying to get. Like you know, the, these kids, they're 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 enjoying doing this new technology, and then they uncover this shady organization. Which I mean, I think it works. I I'm actually going to read this. I just don't know how much the general public will read it if they will get put off. What is the official title for this? The full title listed on Amazon is G.I. Joe Classified Book One, and that's it. It doesn't have like a subtitle or anything like like terror in the classroom or something like that. I feel like if you wanted it to actually achieve mainstream, it, you're going to need a better title than that. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, it's a G.I. Joe book. I don't want to read that. No, Not many people, at least... In, in my opinion, roughly around my age, you're going to be like, oh, it's a G.I. Joe book. That 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 looks interesting. Uh, it, it's going to be filled with intrigue. And, you know, if I was before I started learning about G.I. Joe and heck, even now a little bit, I would be like, oh, cool. It's going to be a book about soldiers fighting and doing that. Like, I don't know. It's just I feel like if they wanted to succeed, they're going to have to do better than they're going to have to do better at putting info out than just putting out a synopsis and changing the date around a whole a whole lot. I just wonder if this was in a middle school library, if it would attract a young audience in the least. I don't know. I've got a few middle school aged nieces and nephews. Maybe I'll just throw it, throw it down in front of them and, and, and then also put Fortnite on and see which one they look at longer. Oh, and yeah. if the book wins, then we know we got a hit. The cover of this book, which is done by Phil Noto, uh, an extremely talented comic book artist that's worked on the G.I. Joe book a couple of times here and there. Most notably did the uh, Scarlet Declassified book for um, Devil's Due. Uh, he did the cover for this. It shows two unidentified students, I, I assume the people from the book, and then the, we see Scarlet, who's doing like a karate kick in jeans. And then there's a picture of Snake Eyes in the back, which implies he's in it as well. I'm not. I'm not going to get into the fact that Snake Eyes is probably a full-grown man, and they've aged Scarlet down to <laughs> be in high school. We're going to just let's just keep on moving. Um, I am interested in reading this. Maybe if there's enough people out there, if you're plan- if you pre-ordered this and you're planning on reading it, uh, hit us, leave us a comment, or shoot us an email. I'd love to have just a small group of people that was uh, sort of like a little book club where we would just kind of read it. It's only 256 pages. It's written for an extremely early reading audience. I don't think any of us would have trouble tackling it. Uh, let me know if you're going to read it. Maybe we can all read it together and then we'll, we'll talk about it on the show. Okay. Uh, let's see. What's next? Super 7 announces Ultimates Wave 3. So we got some Super 7 catching up to get a, get on. All right. So here we are. Speaking of product that is still taking pre-orders way ahead of an initial delivery date, Super 7 has announced the wave, the full set of its next four figures for Wave 3. Those figures are Scarlet, Cobra Trooper, Storm Shadow, and Doc. So there's always, there's a pretty clear divide right now, I feel like, in the Ultimates line. And that line is, these are too expensive. And these are great. <laughs> so it's merely, it's, I, I mean, I get that there are some people that are, are immediately turned off by the concept of starting yet another line in a scale that's not really super compatible with anything that's also coming out right now. But the more of these they, ma- they make, the more I'm like, holy moly, like this is the, these are way more interesting to me than classified figures in the long run because they are just really, really accurate to the original stuff and they are detailed better than classified i am very excited i know these i know some super seven product has been reported as having like quality control issues and again because i don't have these in hand it's hard for me to make that call because i have pre-ordered every set up till now and it is a huge investment for me like it's i'm the sacrifices i have to make to to keep making these happen is brutal so i really do hope they live up to what these images convey and let's take a look at them real quick one by one so starting at the top we have doc who ironically we just saw the first introduction of on our last episode so pretty great timing there doc comes with a lot of great accessories he has uh interchangeable hands that have medical clubs he's got the uh like his actual medical bag with the i don't know what you call that medical symbol on it's like the hipaa logo or something oh yeah the like twin like the the isn't it like a snake on a staff or whatever he's got a little field kit that you can see inside has like scissors and tape he's got a generic comic book that just says comics on it i'm sure that's a reference to something him in the cartoon of the book he's got a little walkie talkie reference he's got this standard cartoon laser gun he also has a regular pistol which is kind of funny because doc doesn't carry or brandish a weapon i mean he's 
you know, we just saw an episode or an issue where he hit Destro with a snowball because he doesn't fire uh, weapons. Has two alternate heads and his helmet all look great. I mean, really, really very good. And then he has his initial flare gun, which is a replica. I mean, like it's a spot on version of what his V1 figure comes with, except this one comes apart in the middle. So it actually has a little bit more functionality. Uh, I love it. That symbol is called a caduceus. Hmm. I don't know if I'd pronounce that right, but um, I've never heard. I that love more. these figures. I love the way these figures look. I just I have a hard time justifying spending almost sixty dollars for one figure. Like, well, especially once you add in shipping, it's two twenty for a pack of four. That's that's a lot for me. Now, granted, they don't put them out as quick um, as you know a lot of lines do, but I don't know. Don't get me wrong; these are like to me, these are more art pieces than anything. Um, but they look a lot more limited in terms of articulation. Now that might not be the case. I just haven't seen it, but looking at the joints, they don't look like they're going to be anywhere near the amount of flexibility as a, as a classified. I don't see any butterfly joints in the shoulders, which will severely hamper it. Uh, I, it looks like it's one single knee joint and that's it. Um, and now depending on how they do that knee joint, it it could still work pretty well. I don't see a thigh cut, and I and I'm not. I don't own any ultimates normally because I'm not paying. I don't like paying sixty dollars for one figure in a line when they release four. Which granted, I pre-ordered that Mezco, so I guess I'm wrong. I don't know. You pre-ordered this bat also, right? No, I didn't. I I, I had originally, and then I canceled it after because you the got classified your classified. Bat. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's it was. To me, there wasn't really any difference in the way they look. Um, plus, like you had said, this is a 7-inch scale, so they're not going to work with my classified. And a lot of my accessories and things, my random weapons, will probably look, won't look right with them. But as, as they are, they're amazing. They're beautiful. I wish I had the, the money to be all in on these. Because that dock, this dock is... One of my favorite looking, like, I don't know, just something about him. It's charming. I love the fact, like you had pointed out, it has medical gloves. It's got a little box. And it is so faithful to the original figure. I love the packaging that they do. It looks great. It's just, I can't. So, let's look at these other guys. Cobra Trooper. Cobra Trooper comes with both light and dark skin options of every single version. So, there's like two, four, six like three or four sets of hands per skin tone, which is amazing. He has a little different set of guns. He's got the like electric whip from the, when the guys have the headbands on in the pilot episode or the or first mini series, they like this electric whip, sort of the same thing they use on the fatal fluffies. Cobra Trooper also has a walkie talkie that is tuned into the exact same frequency as Doc's radio. I don't know if that's intentional or if there's a, if somebody out there knows what that is a reference to, let me know if it's not just a generic walkie talkie. Uh, and then they have like a little bomb diffusal box, which is also a bizarre deep cut from uh, one of the episodes, actually kind of a throwaway if I'm being honest. So interesting detail to pick apart. Cobra Trooper looks great, but again, I mean, I can barely afford one. So, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know if it's worth picking up just the one other than to have it in the set. I will say this as we move on to the next figure that it's very telling for me to know how expensive these are, but also still know that I'm absolutely going to open every one of them and play with them. Like, (laughs) there's a lot of stuff I won't do that with if I pay too much for it. All right, so let me, let me real quick. Uh, two things on the Cobra Trooper. One, I think it's great that they're doing the different skin tones. Mm-hmm. I think that's uh, first off from just an army builder. If anyone's crazy enough to army build these, at least you have some variation. Um, but also representation matters, and G.I. Joe has always done a phenomenal job about that, and I think that's amazing. Um, and then the second thing, if you look at the picture that looks like the uh, kind of that retro box art, mm-hmm. you'll see that neither elbow is hitting over 90 degrees. I don't know if that's a limitation, if that's as far as they can get on this this design maybe this prototype but that's the kind of thing that makes me really really worried about the figures i wish i could see i wish i could see what they did on maybe wave one get one of those in hand Mm -hmm. Um, but we're already on to wave three now and i still haven't seen one in person yeah it's a it's definitely a lot of blind faith involved these for sure i'm buying every set until i've got them in hand and if they disappoint in hand then i'll put them away or i'll sell them 
but I don't want, as of right now, my gut is like, you are going to really like these. I'm not a posability nut to begin with, so it yeah. doesn't have to go all out for me. So, okay, next up, Storm Shadow. So the Storm Shadow, I mean, just like all the other figures, got great handsets, doing some cool ninja stuff. Like he's got like curved knuckles and stuff, like he's doing pinch of death or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got an interchangeable forearm where his bandages are coming off and you can see his tattoo, just like in the end, at the end of issue 21. He's got a deep scuba diving gear from when he dives underwater to pick up Excalibur in the cartoon, which is also pictured here. And then lastly, I mean, other than his traditional stuff, he also has his blue sniper rifle, which he used when he was helping Cobra Commander escape in the G.I. Joe 24. Don't at me. (laughs) Thoughts on Storm Shadow? I think it's beautiful. I mean, it's a similar thing. Like, this looks like it's stepped off of the screen or out of the page. Like, the, the one thing that I cannot say enough about Super 7 is that their art and their design team is phenomenal. Their paint apps are amazing. I mean, that those skin tones look real. Um, and they, they do a good job of making sure you have accessories. Every single figure and every single wave that I've seen, I've not been like, oh, man, I wish it had a little bit more. Like, this looks like a actual full box of a figure like this is not something where i'm like oh, i wish you would have had another sword or anything like that i mean this is plenty his eyes are so telling like there's just something about him that has just the softest touch of animation in it and mm-hmm. it really does make a, the difference between storm shadow figures that we've seen over the last 10 years and this one is that there's something predominantly animated about him and especially in that face Last up is Scarlet, and man, this figure looks good. Has two interchangeable heads. One is like, I guess she's mad, she's happy, and then she also has a walkie-talkie. Big long ponytail in all of those, which I think is awesome. She also comes with a walkie-talkie, doesn't have the same numbers on it. All the walkie-talkies are unique, so they must be based off something. I just am not able to pull it from my, my brain. She's got her standard crossbow, and then she also has like a... I guess that's like a hunter's crossbow. You know what that is? Weaponsmith. The bigger one looks more like an actual crossbow, whereas the other one looks like a single, like a hand crossbow. Like the bigger one looks like a crossbow you would use if you were actually using a crossbow to hunt and everything. Mm-hmm. The smaller one looks like the one you would buy at the peddler's mall when you're 16 and think, "Hey, <laughs> this looks like it'll be a fun weekend." <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe this is like this is the toy accurate one, and this is the actual what the actual weapon would have looked like. Also comes with some gimmick arrows from the cartoon and the comic book. Um, more, most recently in my mind, there's that uh, arrow with the rope, which she Scarlet used at the Springfield comic book where they were falling down and she shot a rope arrow. I think she also did something similar in um, the issue with the Russian uh, with the October Guard, where she planted a arrow in the walls to help them hang on while the tunnel was flooding. So, all good references there. Regular arrows as well, if you don't want to be nutty about it. Uh, and then uh, what it looks like, I think, is an M16 machine gun. Great. This is this is my favorite figure of the line. Uh, but, I'm, I mean, I do lean into that dock also. But I always love a good Scarlet figure because we don't have had a lot of great Scarlet figures over the years. Uh, thoughts on Scarlet as we wrap up this part? Uh, I think the colors that they chose for her is amazing. I think this is the strongest wave yet, in my opinion. I think uh, you have a little army builder for anyone who wants to army build, but you have three iconic characters who look like they just leapt off the screen. I think the alternate heads they did on these work perfectly. I think I think this is the best set of the waves. I think the um, wave two, in my opinion, was probably the weaker weakest of the the three, um, and then in wave wave uh, one was probably the the second best, and that's just because I love the bat. I feel like this is something they could continue to do and do great as long as people are able to support them. Um, and the good thing about them is, you know, they kind of are more likely to just kind of build to order as opposed to mass produce. So if there's, you know, they're going to build enough to where you can have them and that's about it. So if there's a lot of demand, they're going to be able to build enough for you. And if, if it's not got as much demand, they don't have to waste it. So hopefully that means they'll be able to kind of keep the line going. Super 7 is amazing at everything that they've done. It's just not my bread and butter. That walkie-talkie is a nod to the vintage figure, which has it molded, like, I think on the inside of her glove. 
If you were already writing me a comment that said, hey, Greg, you ding dong, that uh, hit, that walkie talkie is melded on the V1 Scarlet. You have to erase that comment and just write, I love Greg. Comment as is. <laughs> this is, I do this a lot. So I know what it's, I know I'm guilty of this. I'll go, oh, I got a correction. And then they'll be like, oh, I remember 10 minutes later. And I'll go, all right, well, that's what I get for being impatient. <laughs> All right, we got two three zero figures to look at. First up, Roadblock one six scale from three zero. Speaking of guys that are continuing to roll out their figures before any, well, I won't say any delivery because I have a lot to say about these three zero figures. So we've got a full reveal on Roadblock, and now we have a full reveal on Firefly as well. The Firefly they're using, or sorry, the Roadblock that they're using is a V two, V three maybe. I forget which one is Tiger Force, and. I'm, go ahead and go ahead and load on this, Jaren, because I think you and I have pretty similar feelings on this figure. Uh, this is, in my opinion, this is my least favorite figure for GI Joe that they've announced recently. <laughs> like, I just <laughs> uh, listen. First off, this is about the twelfth roadblock, and I'm just I'm I get that you want to get some big people out there, but you have heavy duty, you have Doc, you have Stalker. So if you wanted to get someone. Um, if you want to get a person of color, there's other options, and and I'm sure I'm missing quite a few. I I don't know if it's always been the case, but if I guess Roadblock has had a lot of versions, but like, dang, this is this is insane. We had the statue, we had all these different versions. I don't think I've heard anyone with the three zero be like, man, you need to buy these figures. Um, I think the face sculpt looks a little wonky. I think the accessories that he comes with looks pretty cool. I just it I don't care about the cloth. Uh, it. <laughs> It doesn't do it for me, and it's not different enough to where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is this is really cool and unique. Like, I, and I know I'm in the minority here, I would have rather them have swung for the fences and done something weird like a, like a Star Brigade roadblock or something weird instead of here's another version of roadblock with a slightly different colored green, a slightly different giant gun, and his, like, that, to me, that's just like, they played it way too safe, and they didn't do very well, so they're not getting any points for, hey, at least they tried. Yeah, I have, I guess, mixed feelings about this. It doesn't bother me that they're that these guys are also doing a roadblock, because if anything else, if you knew nothing about it, you'd go, man, look how many roadblocks they put out. He must be really popular. We should do one. The thing that gets me is, first of all, why, why not do V1 roadblock? Why skip straight to this one? I don't particularly feel like this is a better outfit and i certainly don't think it's a defining outfit for roadblock as he's really not seen in it very often um i think the accessory set looks good i think the figure itself looks good i think the price point is too much first of all it's 169.99 this is slated for fourth quarter 2022 and yes also to agree with what you said i think that the figure the character selection i think could be a little bit better um and that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Let us let me move on to Firefly, and then I'll kind of condense my thoughts all together about the 3 zero line. So they had teased this Firefly a while back, and they had basically just kind of shown him from the neck up. But now we've seen the full reveal. And, I mean, so it's this is funny, but I feel differently about this figure. One, because Firefly is not a figure that we've been burnt into the ground with. And the classified figure is radically different from this one. This one is much more accurate to a real Firefly Um the cloth on this isn't as obnoxious, and I'm going to say that that's probably because it's all one piece. There's no difference between a big flat, you know, a normal molded piece and the cloth, like Roadblock, who has cloth pants, but like a normal torso. Firefly has a completely cloth outfit, except for like his gauntlets and gloves and stuff, and I think that works to his benefit. I think this figure looks really good. Um, I like the red goggles. I like the little, like, detonator he looks like he holds his guns pretty well which is an issue that i have with three zero is they're not as poseable i feel like as they try to make them look like they are yeah i do want this i hope it's good <laughs> and i might not even be able to commit to it right away like i might have to try to hold off and maybe get a pre-owned one but i do think this would look pretty good as a general rule i think that these figures are a little bit too big for me uh, there becomes a point where i'm just like for the size that I'm purchasing in, I'm expecting much more than what you're delivering. When you get this big, the level of detail should be out, outrageous. And all, although I do think it's extremely good, 
Again, this is another $170 purchase. I just don't. What do you think about Firefly, especially as opposed to Roadblock? Uh, I mean, I think I kind of have the same thing as you, where it's like, well, at least it's a different character. The one Firefly that we have got is drastically different than this and the original. Um, I still don't love this. There's something about the way 3-0 does their heads that there's not a figure that I'm like, oh, that's a good, like... His head looks like it's really big up top, and his face is just, like, tiny. Like, if you took that guy's mask off, he has the smallest chin in existence. <laughs> no cheekbones. Like, I don't know. It just Something about that looks weird. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Everything I'm saying is as someone who could not build anything nearly as good as this. So I don't, I don't ever want to come across as like, oh, they're bad at what they do. It's just compared to what's out on the market and the price point that they're putting it out at, this is a lot. Um, I think the accessories are really cool. I like that the it looks like the stock on his little like SMG, um, like the butt stock actually flips up. I think that's a really cool little touch. I think the cloth on this one doesn't bug me as much because I can't tell that it's actually cloth as much in these pictures. Like I know it is cloth, but if someone put this out, I could see it being a really cool detailed plastic or or something else. I think the, the the fact that it's a one sixth scale hurts it for me. I'm a one twelfth scale collector. If you remember at Kentucky Anna, uh, I bought that that Star Wars one twelfth or one sixth scale, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Got it home, and I was like, this is really cool. And then as the newness wore off, I was like, why did I buy this? I have nowhere to display it. It's one figure that cost more than any other figure in my collection. It was a hot toy. And just, it was the same thing where I was like, the execution of this. I was expecting something that was ten times what a Black Series or a Classified is. Yeah. And I felt like I got a bigger version that was about the same. And I paid way more for it. The way I collect things, I would rather have ten more, or if they're twenty bucks, I'd rather have eight more bats than one of these. Or eight more of any of the army builders. You could give me eight more alley vipers, which is my least favorite of the current available army builders, and I would be more happy with it than one of these. And that's just the, that's my way of collecting. That's not very real. And some people like these because they're bigger. They they do have better detail, um, but that's just it's not me. And and I'm not I'm not gonna get into these lines. And unless they do something crazy, like if they give me a chuckles and I fall in love with it, then I might buy that one <laughs> as a hey, here's my one. Or or you know a freaking tripwire. Whoever does tripwire, I'm buying one just because. Agreed on all of those things except for the tripwire part. Um, <laughs> more more on this when we get to recent acquisitions. <laughs> Deluxe Dr. Mindbender Classified Series art revealed. So now we've seen exactly what the box and the full loadout for Dr. Mindbender is going to look like in the Classified Series. Looks like he's number 43. Front of the box is like got a cut away, like kind of diagonally. And you can see a big Cobra logo on the box. It kind of looks like a big door that's sealed off. And then the front graphic is Dr. Mindbender. There's some like, looks like some underwater stuff on the right hand side. Like I see like a trident you see that yeah i'm not sure what yeah, that I see that I, i'm not sure what that's supposed to represent but there's like different stuff going on all around him in the background it's the aquaman crossover <laughs> that we all wanted yep back of the box is the same cobra logo except you can see it's like a double helix so it looks like a dna strand which i'm assuming is a pretty strong nod towards serpentor if you look on the oh, okay so if you look on the back of the box you can actually see the completed art and there's okay okay i could break some of this down I still don't know what all that is, but that's awesome. So, starting in the upper right-hand corner, that's the brainwave scanner, and that's a pile of DNA strand in the background. This is from a vision that Dr. Mindbender has in the cartoon when he's starting to think about creating Serpentor. Uh, at the bottom, now that I can see the full picture, you can see that those are all the dead bodies of the great people that he that he combs the DNA off of to create Serpentor. I can't remember who specifically is like king of atlantis or something i don't know i don't it's been a bit mm -hmm. and then on the upper left hand side you can see my bitter destro are raiding a tomb in egypt which is also a nod to cover gi joe 49 where they are also raiding a tomb i think in egypt yeah it's a mummy so for sure and then directly below that that's a no-brainer dr Mindbitter is holding the cowl or helmet of serpentor so 
uh, a not so subtle indicator that Serpentor is definitely on the way. I can't imagine uh, that he won't come with the air chariot. So probably another deluxe packaging that we'll see. Uh, I don't know sometime this year. I feel like they don't. They typically don't hint at stuff too far in advance. So I'm, I'm calling it now. I'd say Serpentor is coming in our future. If you open the box up and look at the accessories he comes with. I know a lot of people were asking if he was going to have that little cattle prod thing that his V1 comes with. It does. Looks like he also has his little like weird injector gun. Or I really like the fact that when you open the box, uh, it looks like it's going to open the same way as the, or pretty similar to the way like the dual door kind of thing as the uh, the Supreme Snake Cobra Commander. Mm-hmm. But I like that those. It's like a double helix Cobra logo. I just think that's such a cool cool touch yeah it's very stylized on that i think that's i think that's really clever it comes with two containers for display one holds like a zombie looking hand that has a wire attached to it the other is just for a a flat out brain uh and then he's got a a skull that's blinded can't remember what that's from if you if you know off the top of your head what that is a reference to uh leave us a comment let us know i'm sure once i hear it i'll be like oh of course i dream of the day that that I somehow find one reference that you don't understand <laughs> and like nail it. You're like, I'm like, oh, you don't know what that means? Oh, <laughs> I don't watch the. I would mute all that. I would edit all that out. <laughs> I, would, I, I don't watch the cartoons as regularly as I used to, so I'm sure this is a deep cut uh, that I'm just forgetting. Probably maybe even from the creation of Serpentor era. Uh, and then lastly, he's got four little interchangeable pods. I'm guessing those go into that gun that he's got, that little injector mm. thing. Uh, so a good accessory set like they all come with stuff that will make I, I mean is more useful for building like a Dr. Mindbender diorama set right like if you're building a yeah a mad lab scientist laboratory then this type of stuff would go good in the background so yeah nothing you know better than packaging them with a big dumb bike that I don't have a purpose or use for it's never been referenced ever in G.I. Joe history whoa that seemed really personal. Like. <laughs> I know, right? I went in on it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Th- anyway, more on this as we see some more stuff, but I thought it was interesting that they've already kind of shown the, f- the full enchilada. <laughs> Super 7 Reaction Wave 3. So, I don't know why we didn't cover our Super 7 news together, but we have two other Super 7 things to talk about. The first is the April Fool's joke that everybody heard about where they put two uh, reaction figures that are based on Fensler films, uh, Roblox Body Massage and Mutt's I'm a Computer. Jaren, I have been thinking about this since these have been announced, and that's been well over two weeks ago. Have you seen what these are referencing? Are you familiar with the Fensler films? I I have seen those before I even really had known what G.I. Joe was, just okay. because of the, hey, these are funny videos. They are, I mean, they're very early viral videos that I have seen many times and I would never have expected it. Right. Everybody saw this on April fools. They went April fools joke. Ha ha ha. Good one. And then they took your money. So suddenly everybody was like, Holy crap, these are actually real. And uh, sure enough, they are. And they're amazing. I have an email from Eric Finsler that I sent. It's the second, this is the second oldest email still existing in my very old email account. (laughs) I shipped this. I sent this email November 18th, 2003. <laughs> that is all. Wow. Were you born then? Were you alive okay. then? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that young. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> I mean, but I was in the single digits in 2003. I was nine. This email is pointless, but I'll share it with you anyway, because it's something that I always think about when I think of Fensler Films. I, my email says, I know you probably get a lot of stupid emails from a lot of goofy-ass fans, but me and my friends have started saying, gone, in the spirit of Roadblock tossing the wire. But we have recently been challenged with the idea that he's not saying gone, but go. If you have time to answer this, it would mean a lot to me and my friends. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> And amazingly, of that stupid email, he wrote me back. And he said, not a problem. It's body massage machine, go. Hope that helps you. Peace, Eric Fensler. <laughs> so these have a special place. They, they were very, very funny when they came out. I don't know how they hold up now in current meme culture, but they have lived on for quite a while, and I've rewatched them multiple times. He got in trouble for making these, and they gave him a cease and desist, and that's why they got kind of cut short, I guess. 
Um, but there are, some of these are just absolutely righteous. They're so uh, outlandish. And so, again, I was shocked to see that these were not only had been created but were real. I snatched them both up. On the tail side of that, they also released that they have the next wave coming out of their series. And it consists of uh, Cobra Commander in like a regal blue, Flint, Roadblock, which is very similar to the April Fool's one, except he has a different head mold and a different accessory set. Uh, Firefly, for the first time. Baroness in a black outfit as opposed to the blue. And a snake eyes that's kind of in between. He's, I don't, I'm not sure specifically. Probably that's a comic book reference also. Um, he's got almost like a purple, like a really, really deep blue paint scheme. And then they also announced uh, about a million accessory, like troop builders. They made a G.I. Joe soldier, and it's a female, sort of like a green shirt, but based on the cartoon. There are nine variations of it. Uh, they wear different, I mean, they basically wear the same thing. It's just different color skin tone, it looks like, and a different weapon set. So it's actually three different skin tones, and then there's three variations on that, and they made one for each one. But they're not stopping there, because then they also made snakelings, which are definitely from the cartoon, and they're like look they're like sort of like cobra not cobra troopers but more like cobra henchmen or like they do stuff around to keep the things operating smoothly in cobra central and these are based off of like joes that actually were in disguise i think that's like the bottom one um i think there's a shipwreck in there on the right and i'm not sure about the other ones but yeah so there's another nine figures on top of that I'll go ahead and talk first about these because I know you're not buying any Super 7 stuff and I have been buying Super 7 stuff. Mm -hmm. My first rule to collecting Super 7 stuff is no troop builders. I cannot collect... I can't collect the three variations, much less the nine alternate variations of that. And and in addition to that, I'm trying to be very responsible because everybody says these are too expensive. Lots of people don't think these are good figures. There's a pretty big split on these as well. And while there are valid points on both sides of the spectrum, I said if I go in and I but I go in kind of responsibly, I think I can collect these. And so that's what I'm trying to do. So looking at this wave which I just cut out 18 figures of because I'm not buying any of the troops, I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to pass on this Cobra Commander because I already have bought two, including the Target exclusive. Same with the Snake Eyes. I've bought two Snake Eyes already, including that Target exclusive. I'm going to pass on this Roadblock because I have the April Fool's figure, and I think that's close enough. His face only looks a little different. And then the other three, I'll, you know, I'll definitely get Firefly and Flint because they're first. Since that Baroness is a maybe just because I like it so much. So when I work with it like that it's not a significant investment you know i'm only buying two maybe three figures if all of the waves were like that i could probably keep up with it as it goes i've i have to this point been very pleased with the super seven set i think the art is great and i think the approach is interesting i know not what most of us wanted but it is what it is so i do enjoy them from from that practice also i've been pre-ordering these from big bad toy store this is i guess maybe not important to a lot of collectors but almost all of these have come in unpunched which is not something that i see very often anymore so i am enjoying also being able to collect a lot of them in an unpunched capacity they just look like super nice and mint i can't hang them anywhere as a result but it's uh i like having them like that Jaren, I know you're not in on Super 7 at all, but just as an overall thought, what, what do you, what's your takeaway from this new wave? The thing is, if they were $11 even, I would buy them. Yeah. I've, I've held these things in my hands because I do, I, I love the card art. I actually, I'm, I'm, have been a Star Wars collector, so 5 POA doesn't bother me at all. Um, it's actually like I like it. I don't have the nos- like the nostalgic factor for me where my God, small, you know, three and three quarter GI Joes have to be O ring. Like, don't get me wrong, O ring GI Joes are my favorite GI Joes, but I don't like that. It doesn't immediately kill it for me. So it's it's literally just the price. Like, I don't, if they start doing figures. For characters that I like are like weird out there and like really ones I like, I'll buy them just because. Um, but I don't, I don't feel the need to buy another roadblock, another, you know, another Snake Eyes, another Cobra Commander. I'm fine with what I have. 
The funny thing is, is that this is the one line that I really truly, truly believe will could be the first line to reveal a tripwire. If they do, I will buy. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to put this on the record. They do a tripwire. I will buy 10 of them. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Hold Jaron accountable for his foolish. Super 7. Super <laughs> 7. If, if you're hearing that, you've got at least 10 sold already. If you just do it. Don't gonna, be a coward. I'm going to add Make them. a tripwire. I'm going to add them and be like, where's that tripwire at? I got dozens of fans lined up. <laughs> I got, I I got, got 10, one fan I got, to buy almost a dozen. I got 10 <laughs> sold right here. <laughs> All 10 of the 10 that you will sell of tripwire. That's right. All right, so that's going to do it for the news. Let's move into recent acquisitions and as well as our coverage of Lexington Comic Con 2022. Recent acquisitions. <laughs> recent acquisitions. All right, well, welcome to recent acquisitions. The reason we bundled these two things together is because most of the stuff that Jaren and I have picked up in the last little bit probably came from Lexington Comic Con. I know that. Him and I have both scaled back a little bit on what we've been buying. I had to use a lot of money for my shelving project, and so that pretty much put me out of purchasing business for several weeks. And then once I was kind of back to normal, we were so close to Lexington Comic Con, I started saving my money up for all of the various things that I was hoping to find there. And I had a great time at Lexington Comic Con, and obviously the reason we were going was because Larry Hama was going to be there. And so I want to talk a little bit about that part before we pick, get into what we picked up. So we were only going to attend on one day because it's a little bit of a drive for us. And I knew that Larry had a commission list that filled up right with like as soon as he got there. And I'd say we were probably there within, I don't know, maybe the first half hour of it opening. Would you say that's accurate? I think so. And of course, so of course we went right there. Sure enough, he was cut off the list. It The conversation we had made it kind of seem like, in retrospect, maybe we were the first people to not get on the list because they talked about it with us for at length about how I probably wouldn't be able to get them all done and uh, Larry doesn't make a lot of money off these sketches and just stuff like that where he was like, it's not feasible for me to take on something like this. I'm already drawing, you know, 30 plus drawings probably today alone and he was mailing stuff to people and he wasn't gonna let us get in on any of that and i don't begrudge him for it i was disappointed of course because i'd had a specific commission in mind i'm not even going to get into the fact that at that time it was probably the last time larry's commit pencil commissions were going to be offered at 40 dollars, as he just announced that now he would be charging 100 dollars for his sketches at conventions which again i do not begrudge him uh that is still a pretty fair price for what larry delivers and i know it is painful for him to draw uh at his age because he speaks often about his arthritis in his hand so i am very sympathetic to that well i would still pay a hundred dollars for a pencil sketch for larry um but i don't know when that opportunity will present itself again we'll just have to stay on our toes so that was a bit of a bummer but we i mean it wasn't the only that wasn't the only eggs in our basket. We had brought lots of things to get signed. Jaren, what did you get signed by Larry? I had a G.I. Joe number one signed by Larry. Yeah. And after much debate, I think I don't remember if we had talked about it on on air, but I I'm really weird with personalization. Um, but also I'm really weird about people thinking that I want to sell stuff that they're they're doing for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so in the end, I did have him personalize it, and I am very happy that I did that. Um, just because it. it it is something that I will remember forever. And when I am dead and gone, I don't really care what happens with it. Cause I'll be gone. There are a lot. I mean, in terms of signatures, I can't think of many more things that are as iconic as just get a GI Joe number one signed by Larry, man. Like that's the peak to me. That's the, the prime thing you would want to display in your collection. Is it just a nice signed copy of GI Joe number one? Like, I mean, there are, don't get me wrong. I have dozens of things signed by Larry over the years. <laughs> and I'm always trying to find something odd and unusual to get signed next. But that number one was the first thing I got signed. Um, if you haven't seen Larry in a long time, and I apologize if these rules change or if I'm making a subtle mistake, but just to give you a little transparency, right now Larry is, will sign two things for free as long as they're personalized to you. Every item after that is $5 if personalized, $10 if not. And I think it was like, I, I don't know, maybe twenty dollars if it was CGC. I don't do, I don't yeah. mess with CGC stuff at all. But I know there's always a, an upper charge for that. And so, I brought just a hodgepodge of different things that were, had kind of been on my mind 
or stuff that other people had worked on were going to be there. Like I had brought that G.I. Joe dead game that Rob Liefeld worked on because Kevin Eastman was also going to be there and he had done like a one page spread in the final book. So anyway, the I got Larry to sign a G.I. Joe declassified because that's something we had just talked about. He signed like a, one of the older yearbooks that has Dawn on the cover. And then I brought this gigantic print that Jaron had bought for me from a Jamie Sullivan sale. I'll put the picture up on our YouTube, but, or you might have seen it if you follow us on our socials. It's just, I don't know the dimensions on it, but it's longer than my arm's reach. And in the picture, I'm trying to spread it out as much as I can because um, that's something that I'm planning on getting framed to put it up on my uh, on my wall sometime this year or next, depending on the cost. And so I thought this would be a great thing for Larry to sign real big. It's a limited. It was like one of eight prints. And it's that OG 13 print that Jamie did, which I'm very, very, very fond of. Probably one of my favorite pieces of G.I. Joe art ever. So I thought, man, this is going to look amazing when I get it all situated. And of course, we talked to Larry just a little bit. I didn't want to. I didn't want to impose because I could kind of ask Larry questions forever. But I thought, in the interest of the show, I would talk to him about stuff that we had been talking about recently. And so the thing I asked him about was GI Joe declassified. And I said, "Hey, we just talked about this, and I was curious if this was something that you pitched to them, or did Devils Do come to you?" And Larry told me that Devils Do came to him. That the entire concept was his idea. Which is interesting. I wasn't able to probe any further than that because, again, we didn't want to take up all of his time. But things like having sparks in it, for example, it doesn't seem like something that Larry would lead off with. A man who has said many times, and I believe, that he's never seen the cartoon, which is predominantly where Sparks is from. So unless he was reading Old Devil's Do Press comics where he's kind of mushed in there, then I don't know where he's pulling that continuity from. But anyway, it was interesting to get some clarification that this was his pitch, and, you know, as one of the few projects he did for Devil's Do. I thought that was interesting. Jaren, do you want to talk about what you asked, Larry? Uh, so, yeah, I uh, I was trying to figure something that maybe he hadn't been asked about. Um, and being the non-G.I. Joe guy in a G.I. Joe podcast, I was like, let's ask him about MASH. And, man, it was it was actually really cool. We He went – there was a pretty long line at the point when I asked him. And I figured we'd get, oh, it's really cool. Everyone was nice, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but he actually ended up going pretty in-depth on uh, his time in MASH. And he was talking about the people who uh, – uh, one of the characters who was really beloved was actually one of the uh, like one of the colonels that, or one of the the higher ups uh, in the military uh, that were in the U.S. That was kind of like a bad guy. It's Major Burns. The character of Major Burns is like a real sissy kind of like bossy rat, and he said that he was one of the nicest guys he'd ever worked with. Yeah, and uh, he he had said that maybe the <laughs> the ah uh, oh, gosh, what's his name? Um, the people that everyone loved was actually one of the not as loved characters. Radar, the guy that played Radar O'Reilly, apparently was a real jerk in real life. Yeah, um, but my favorite takeaway from it was he was talking about um, the set and the, the set life, and he was like, "What they did is, if you were going to be on set, you were in fatigues. So it didn't matter if you were there for wardrobe, if you worked wardrobe, you were wearing fatigues. If you were a cameraman, a mic operator, if you were anything." And, and he had said that that was kind of that way they wouldn't have to cut scenes. They wouldn't have to worry about people walking in and out. Um, but also it kind of immersed it and, and, uh, kind of brought that up that it, he, he had said it was kind of strange almost being a, a veteran, um, kind of putting you right back into that feeling and how real it really did feel. He even mentioned that they ate in the mess hall on those plates like that's what they did on set not when the cameras were rolling like the 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 creators had actually built that um as such a realistic experience that he was like it was almost too real or he kind of said it was too real yeah but he's basically said that he didn't feel like he had anywhere to like escape from from that setting yeah like it was constantly reliving your um, what, what I would imagine would be pretty traumatic experiences on set of a TV show. And like he had said, your your lunch was normally the time to get away and kind of cut loose. But the way that they did it, that that didn't happen. So it was really strange, but uh, or it was really cool hearing it. Um, but I can imagine that that would be very strange as an actor. Yeah, that conversation also led Larry into talking about a lot about how Shooter is based on a real person that he knew. And that's someone he still keeps in touch with, like her, her 
children were in the military currently. Like um, he'd mentioned how it became easier to write the books because everybody he was writing was based on somebody he knew in real life. Like he was talking about Wild Bill was based on a guy that was like a big cavalry gung ho nut, and, and that so when he would write Wild Bill. He'd go, no, that's not what Wild Bill would do, meaning, no, this is not what my friend so-and-so would have done in this situation, which I think is a pretty good strategy when you have a roster as gigantic as G.I. Joe to, you know, to start basing it around real people, and then you don't have to wonder about their, like, what kind of decision-making they would do if you know that person well enough. So I had a great time. Always a pleasure to meet Larry. Uh, very hospitable. He was in a good mood. I could talk with Larry, I mean, almost all day because I always have, there's always some thought I have, you know, that I want to get a solid resolution to, or we're always diving deeper into things like the comic books to look for stuff that's been missed or maybe a different understanding of it than what we thought of it as a child. So anyway, wrapping all that up, wonderful to talk to Larry, had a great time. Always a pleasure to get stuff signed by him. I I did also get my Fresh Monkey Fiction, Larry Hama figure signed. I will talk about Mm -hmm. that. I will talk about that briefly. <laughs> so when I brought in the figure, if you've seen this figure at all, it's it's a it's a three and three fourths or four inch design to look like Larry. And on the back of it, much like the Sergeant Slaughter San Diego Comic Con figure, they have like a little strip and it says signature. So I thought, well, I'd like for him to sign this on the front because I want to display it, but I'd also like him to sign that signature spot in the back. Uh, just because I think it looks cool. So I paid the extra fee. I said, hey, I'd like to have this signed twice on the front and on the back. And he personalized it on the front, which is fine. And then he turned it over to the back and signed it as about as far away from that signature box as you could get. <laughs> it's supposed to, it's signed horizontally instead of vertically. I don't know if he hasn't been signing them and nobody's pointed it out, or he just was like, I don't give a crap where this guy wants me to sign it. I'm Larry Hama. I'll sign it wherever the hell I want. Um, and I'm not in, I'm not upset about it um, because, again, it was on the back. And he signed it on the back. I mean, I got what I paid for. He just didn't put it. I should have been more specific, I guess. But I thought it was funny that he was literally just like, oh, I don't think so. I, I sign it anywhere I want. <laughs> so let's talk about what we picked up while we were there. Uh, I only picked up two G.I. Joe-related things. It wasn't a very G.I. Joe heavy show at all. There was a lot of random stuff thrown in here and there, I feel like. Or we would see some stuff and it would be pretty dramatically overpriced. But And so because, partially because of that, by the as the end of the show was wrapping up, I was kind of like, wow, I have a little bit more money than I expected. I guess I could buy, pull the trick on something a little bit more mid-range for my budget. And so I did. I picked up two things that I had seen and been thinking about recently. First thing I picked up was the three zero storm shadow figure, not the camo one, just the original one. Uh, they had it uh, a little bit cheaper than retail, which was surprising and was basically what it was going to have to be to entice me. I think I paid like one ten or something. It was a good price and I am extremely disappointed in it. I, when I got it open and put it out, I thought this will look great in the display case. I'll put him in a pose and it'll look cool can't really get into very many poses it's not a very well designed like engineered figure in my opinion he looks good but he doesn't look great and so for that price point especially coming off of the mezco comparison i just don't think he holds any water to it and i won't be buying any more with the exception of that firefly maybe i mean come on he looks good Mm. the thing that the thing that did it for me was i was changing his hands out and he has the wraps on his forearms and one of the wraps on his forearms came off I thought, oh, cool, I could display it like this. And I was shocked to find out that there is no Arashikage tattoo underneath that wrap. They didn't even take the time to put it there. They just assume you're going to keep his wraps on all the time. I found that to be a distressing lack of detail on a figure that's you know close to the $200 price point. I mean, if you collect 3-0 and it's your bag, I'm not throwing any shade on you. Everybody's got different stuff. I collect a lot of dumb junk that people think is worthless. It's just not for me. They're a little too big. They're not quite poseable enough. I think that as the Mezco line continues to roll out, it'll ultimately eclipse these figures altogether. And then the only other thing I picked up was something that I has been on my hate buy list for a very long time. It's the San Diego Comic Con Missile Command Center that was designed at the end of around the end of Mark Weber's run. And basically, if you're not familiar with it, it is a modern replica of the vintage Sears exclusive cardboard rocket launch center. And it's actually been made to look like the box looks weathered 
And even though the figures that come with it are modern, it's a Cobra Commander and two troopers, the base itself is pretty much, you know, it's just a piece of cardboard. So they've made a pretty reasonable facsimile of it overall. And then the box, I think, is the cherry on top because the box is made to look very, very old. I got an okay deal on this based on what it's going for. I actually, to back up a little bit, have this is on my hate buy list because when it originally released, you had an opportunity of buying San Diego Comic Con exclusives through the Toys R Us website if you were fast enough. And in previous years, I had been just fast enough. This that year, I was not. I missed it by, I mean, maybe seconds. And I was so mad about it, I said, I'm never going to buy it. And then the further away I got from it, the more I was like, this is actually one of the only ones I'm missing. So I started looking for it again, not realizing how expensive it was. So anyway, I pulled the trigger at this. It was $150, which I'm not happy about at all. And on top of that, part of the reason it's a little bit cheaper than what it's selling for on eBay is because it has some pen writing on it. Very minimal, but too, like, somebody, like, tested a pen to see if it was working, that kind of thing, like a bunch of whoops. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not brave enough to try to remove it because I don't know if it'll be worth it. And maybe ultimately the box looks weathered so it kind of fits in. I thought, what the hey, I'll go with it. Better to have this one at a discounted price than to have none at all. So I don't want to pay, you know, the 200 bucks I've seen it go for. And that was it. Those are the only two things I bought. It's been a real chill week. Everything I have bought otherwise is just too scattershot to, like, I bought some repo blades for my tomahawk. I bought, I've bought a lot of stuff for the presentation of the of my room which is not fun to talk about at all so it's been a bit of a lull as i've trying to keep up with my pre-orders and also make some improvements to the room which is coming along very well if you haven't watched the video this is maybe the first time we've recorded since i put it up there there is a video on our youtube channel now where you can see my entire figure collection from 1982 to basically the end of last year the it goes all the way up to retro stalker or retro grunt retro scarlet um, check it out. It's something that I've been working on a long time. I've never had all my figures in one place at one time. I mean, it's easily over a thousand figures. It's a good watch. All right. So tell me about what you picked up, Jaren. Um, well, you know, I don't think I actually had any Joe pickups at Lexington Comic Con, unless you can think of something I forgot. I can't. What have you uh, picked up in general? The only thing I have picked up Joe related, and to clarify, I am currently renovating my entire basement. So that has been why I haven't posted any toy pictures on Instagram, but also uh, I haven't really bought anything in quite a bit. Um, it's just been kind of, I, I don't see the point in buying stuff that then has to go into storage. Then I'm also at the point where I'm like, do I have this one already? Um, especially with me buying a lot of, of badgers and vamps. Like, you know, you want to make sure that, you're only buying multiples if it's something great like a badger. Mm-hmm. I picked up a modern vamp mark. I don't know if it's Mark II. I don't know which version it is. It's from the Danger at the Dock set. Um, it is not the tan one. It is the uh, blue and gray camo. So the regular one, the other one is like a con exclusive? I didn't know which one was con exclusive. I have the blue one, and I think I guess that's the the non-con, the regular one, which I prefer because I think it looks way more unique. If I was going to get a tan vamp, I would rather just have the old vamp, the actual vamp Mark II. But um, I went on a road trip down to Memphis, took my family down, and um, I have a general rule of thumb that if I go to a new city for the first time, I like to hit up a comic book shop. Um, and luckily, I uh, found a comic book shop that had a vintage toy, toy store uh, there was one store in the middle, so it was a vintage toy store, uh, some kind of like candle place, and then a comic book shop. So I picked up a uh, Ninja Turtles Last Ronin at the comic book shop, and then I picked up a Vamp Mark II, a Danger at the Docks Vamp, at the uh, comic book shop. Nice. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I was just looking to see if you really did have the variant or the original one. I don't know. I went on YoJo, and it says it's a variant, but I couldn't figure out which one was. Yeah, it's it's listed as a variant because Hasbro considers them variations, but they're very different. Uh, you definitely, one of them is definitely a lot easier to find than the other. Okay, well, a mystery for another day. I believe that you probably have the regular one because the exclusive the exclusive one would be really expensive. Yeah, it looks like I have the regular because uh, I just pulled it up on his tank. Danger of the Docks SDCC 2014 debut. It's got a flint and a tan vamp. Okay, cool. But I am happy with that. And I got it for a good price. It was missing one single missile. Everything else was there. That's always good. I might even have that missile. 
<laughs> if we it's ever sort through it's a pretty common looking missile. Yeah, I'm, I'm. They've used it on several vehicles around that time frame, so you might probably wouldn't even have to buy that exact one if you find it cheaper on another set. All right, last thing we got to talk about before we wrap up is mail call. I don't have a jingle for mail call. Mail, 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 mail from the public. I'll see if I can make something up. Mail, 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 mail from the public. Someone actually likes us. This letter comes to us from Scott R. It says, hey gang, I love hearing your haul stories on the show and figured you'd appreciate my haul story from today. Was looking at Facebook Marketplace while waiting for a pizza at a local place. Someone local to me puts up an ad with what appears to be the better part, meaning a fairly good portion, of a USS flag like just before I started looking. Looks like the whole deck and tower, some of the understructure and other pieces. Once it gone by the end of the weekend, best part, they are giving it away for free. Oh my gosh. I messaged them to make sure it's actually free. They say yes. I say, give me your address. And just an hour, under an hour later, the flag is in the back of my car on the way home. It needs new decals. It needs to be cleaned up. There's a bit of a deck warp from probably poor storage that I have to fix, but this has to be what I, this has to be what I see go for almost a thousand dollars for free. I can't believe my luck. Hope you guys have a great week and get some good scores at your next con. Take care, Scott. Scott, thanks so much for writing in. I uh, couldn't even pretend like I'm not jealous. Uh, who doesn't love a, uh, an amazing hall score like that. And honestly, getting a flag that's in a pretty good condition that needs a little bit of work is actually kind of part of the fun. Cleaning up a flag and just like restoring it and getting new decals, I think is a very like good hobby, like a good use of spare time. It feels very fulfilling when you take an old vintage toy and bring it back to life. So I hope you're able to do that. I hope you uh, clean it up and give it a little love. And I'd love to see it when you get it into a, a position where you want to show it off. Yeah. Also, uh, send your location. I'm going to make sure to set my location there on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Well, uh, no, that's amazing. I don't. I have never found a single Joe on Facebook Marketplace. It's hard enough to find stuff on eBay. That is what I'm specifically looking for, and the logistics of the human interaction that goes into getting stuff like that is too much for me. I need somebody to come to my house and deal with me in my driveway, basically. If you have gotten a, a local haul or gotten a great deal on something and you want to share it with us, you can write to us at anythingjoespod at gmail.com. Or maybe you have a underrated character that you feel like doesn't get enough appreciation. Well, you've come to the right place, so let me tell you because I love some underappreciated Joes. Except for Tripwire. He's not underappreciated. He's in dozens of issues. He needs to be in hundreds. Or you can leave a comment on this YouTube video and say, hey, you know who I love? Shadow Tracker. How about you? Yes, I do love Shadow Tracker. Thanks so much, new pen pal. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Anything Joe's Pod. And you can find us on YouTube just as Anything Joe's. We locked that bad boy down. And we appreciate everyone that listens, watches, writes, responds, likes, dislikes. Man, I'm just kidding. I can't see if they dislike it anymore. And my life is better because of it. Yeah, write us in. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be back in two short weeks. We're going to cover the next issue, G.I. Joe number 12. It's when things really start to kick into action and we're you really start to get a sense of continuity to the book. And it is a great one. I'm very excited to read it, not only with you, the listeners, but with Jaron, who has no idea what's to come. And that's going to do it for us today. Thanks so much for listening. And we look forward to talking to you again in just two short weeks where anything's available for discussion here on Anything Joe's. <laughs>